Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just pump the brakes, dude. This is a Warhammer channel, right? Then why are we talking about the game? I want to know the exact strategy and deployment plan when running a cult of speed list into a Grey Knight's army when incorporating the new Dread Knight meta. Not how much your sexy ass can bench press. What's going on, bro? Yes, don't worry, I am definitely still dedicated and this channel is definitely still pinpointed to the expensive hobby known as Warhammer 40k and I'm going to consistently keep uploading content about that. But, as it may seem a bit of a surprise, I actually do have hobbies outside of Warhammer 40k and this YouTube channel. I know, shocker, right? And as you may have guessed by the title, one of those is the gym. Now, the only reason I'm actually ever going to be talking about the Juiceheads Ritual Circle... <laughs> is because of the mass amounts of health benefits and emotional benefits and even spiritual benefits to a certain extent I have received when going to the gym. Now, I'm not talking about benefits as in like, I picked up six girls in my first two days of the gym, guys, get on my level. I'm talking about the actual benefits. You know, the more energy, the better sleep, which then you can then put like the energy capacity into your work, school, which then increases the results in that. And also the confidence factor, not only from like the muscle you build in the gym, which you definitely will build no matter what you're doing, but also the mindset it puts you in when you understand that you are now the person who can go to the gym four, five, six times a week consistently and make progress from that. So I'm simply here to give you guys kind of more a bit of a layout of how you can get started in the gym. Now, if you have heard all the benefits I listed above and you think, that's stupid, I'm not going to the gym, the gym is gay and only for gay people. Pause the video real quick. I got a story. So I typed up the gym is gay on Google trying to find a cool image I could make an edit out of and I found this. And my biggest question is who the fuck is coloring this in? But anyway, back to the video. Well, you do you, but I know you want to look good deep inside it. No matter how much you want to deny it, I know. I'm 16. I would definitely know that is the case. So, listen here. I'm simply giving you a basic rundown of how you can start the gym, good workout plans, some diet advice, and more or less a couple tips I've learned from doing one and a half years of experience inside of the gym. And plus, I have the talking stick, so you kind of have to listen to me. So, silence your mind, and most importantly, silence your mouth. And I'm about to get active and tell you guys the exact way we can start the gym, simplest form possible. Now, this first topic is one that is heavily looked over inside of the fitness community, and even just in most general men's spaces. This is a big dick, and that's the best thing that you can have in life. And it seems that anything that you do that involves bettering your mental health through like meditation or positive self-talk is seen as gay. But trust me, when you're in the gym and everyone has bigger arms than you, everyone's got chiseled abs, and for some goddamn reason, everyone's got a massive arm. But the point I'm trying to get here is that you're going to start comparing yourself to people with 5 to 20, to even 25 years of experience on you. And let's get real here. Most of those are going to be fitness influencers, and, well, we all know what they're doing, right? What kind of steroids were dudes doing back then? Yeah, basic. You know, you got... You know, your test, uh, D-ball, it's just basic stuff. Yeah, yeah, because that's definitely all he was doing, right? That's all he was on, 100%, not a single doubt in my mind. And from this, you're going to start gaining body dysmorphia. And even to a certain extent, when you gain body dysmorphia, most likely will follow with an ED. And no, that's not what you think. It stands for an eating disorder. Don't worry, your PP will be fine. At least I hope. So... You need to detach yourself away from the idea that the gym is you and everything is my body and if I'm not huge and ripped at the same time, then I'm completely meaningless and I mean nothing in this world. And you need to start putting your self-worth in something that's a little bit more understandable and actually reliable, like your personality, the way you act, your values, and your purpose in this world. So what I would suggest here is saying things like, I am not my body, my body does not reflect my self-worth, and even the gym is if, the gym is not me if you really want to. Now, I'm not saying you have to sit there and meditate on this for 20 minutes at a time. Just like before you go to the gym or in your morning routine or something like that, just say like, hey, you know, it doesn't really matter. Like if you're looking in the mirror and you're like, huh, I don't really like that. Remember, the gym isn't me, 
the gym isn't me. My body doesn't matter. Obviously, I want to look good, but in this process now, I'm doing something important, so I must understand my value does not reflect this. And like I said, I know it sounds gay now, but trust me, take it from me, who's had body dysmorphia, had a mad eating disorder, with halted my progress for so long, you're going to want to do this. And it will absolutely take your perspective, erase bad mindsets, and allow you to actually make proper progress in the gym because you know what you're doing. Now, for the actual finding the gym part, I think this is something that you need to do kind of by yourself. And what I mean by that is you need to understand that I can't really give you advice on what works for you, what works in your time schedule, what works your own personality, or you're introverted and extroverted and you like kind of like working out alone and you're like working out with people. All that depends on who you are and what you generally think you'd be most comfortable with. But if I give some advice, it's going to be this. First of all, you're going to want to book some gym tours. Find out if the gym is for you. If the general idea of being a gym bro, a gym shark, and being in the gym, the actual gym, is for you. It's what I did. I got my bike, I booked a couple tours, and I went there. I asked six different gyms, hey, can I have a tour? Some of them told me to piss off, some of them told me sure, and some of them asked for money. But at the end of the day, I got like four or three tours. I can't really remember what it was, but I got tours of the gyms. And turns out, I didn't really like the gym, and so I built my own gym at home. Not a very good one, if I've got to be honest. You can't even really call it a gym to an extent, but it's definitely worked for me, and I find it so much more comfortable, so much more reliable. I can do so much more stuff, and just I feel like I'm making more progress. I've been to gyms before, school gyms, stuff like that. I never really found I could get a good quality workout in. When I got my simple equipment, my barbell, my dumbbells, I could just go crazy with that and actually make good progress like I'd never made before. But this is me. This with my time schedule, this is with being in school, doing video stuff, all that stuff, that's for me. This is my personal schedule. You need to find that out by yourself. You need to figure out, hey, what fits for me? Is it easiest to go to the gym? There's a gym in my office, I'll go to that. The gym down the road, I can just go to that after work. Like, what's your easiest situation? Figure it out, weigh up the options. Do I wanna be kind of more social in the zone and kind of in the busy hours of a gym if I, if you do work and people go after work? Am I fine with that? Am I fine with having, you know, gym, equipment taken up am i fine with getting social am i fine with commuting am i fine with paying a monthly tax or are you fine with hey i'm fine with working out by myself i'm fine with having a limited amount of equipment a limited amount of space hey i'm fine with doing it by myself i prefer to be alone i prefer to do this i prefer to get good quality workouts in it depends on how you roll so figure it out do you like working in a gym do you like not basically ask yourself a couple questions and there you go pick your poison and you're good to go Now we get into the nitty gritty stuff. The topic that gets the keyboard warriors fired up, ready to go. And by the literal nature of the fitness industry and the fitness community, I'm pretty sure I've probably have like six, seven, or even 10 comments down below of basically them saying how small I am and my opinion does not count because the exact angle I perform on an incline bench press is not the right for hypertrophy. And all that by far. And yes, you could say that, oh, I only have one and a half years of experience i'm only 16 what am i talking about shut the hell up i'm not going to listen to you while i listen to you when there's people's twice twice this kid's size talking about more information with more knowledge and you can you can click off if you want to i'm simply giving you advice on my experience what has worked for me over the years what interesting things have i added that's allowed me to make more progress and do things on quite a long scale being six month periods of changing things up seeing what works and learning from my mistakes so if you want to listen to me cool if you don't go away go watch some other inf fitness influencer i'm simply trying to get as many people into the gym who aren't already in there so i've done the research i've done my stuff i've had my personal experience i've had my six months blocks you make up your mind now there are three ways that we can make an efficient workout plan that actually works from my experience now the first one is going to be you wing it. Now, if you have, like, no intent of becoming a professional bodybuilder, you don't really care where your muscles are at. You just want to be healthy. Like, maybe you're pushing 70, 60, 80, or even 90, and you just want to be healthy, and you want to use the gym to be healthy. Just wing it, honestly. There's no need to pay so much money to get, like, these optimized courses when you're just looking to be healthy. You can literally Google workout plans, 
and basically just copy and paste one from the internet and go from there. Obviously, you still want to optimize some things so you can make more muscle and be more healthy. There's no point in doing something wrong if you're putting effort into it, but there's no need to go full out extreme if you simply are just kind of wanting to be healthy. You just want to have a little bit of muscle mass. You just want to use it for the actual health benefits and not from the aesthetic point of view, and you just want to be more healthy. So definitely an option if you're looking at just kind of being healthy. But if you're actually like a proper IFBB pro bodybuilder and you want to start getting a fully built and you want to get muscle, this probably isn't like the best option for you. I don't know why I said IFBB pro bodybuilder, like there's no point of that. The next one is going to be making one yourself. Now this is where the heat turns up to max. This is where the keyboard warriors, they pull out their keyboards and they tell me how wrong I am. Like this is where the arguments start. This is where the frequency over intensity arguments start. This is where the art, the debate of should you train like a hero and just go for max failure all the time or train smart like Jeff Nippert and people like that tell you to. And should you lift heavy or should you lift for max reps? Things like that, people love arguing. But this information I'm about to give you is information I've found has worked for me time and time again when I've incorporated. It has worked for multiple people who I talk to time and time again. People in the gym, people much older than me, people even a little bit younger than me, things like that, it seems to work. And it's also what like the actual good fitness influencers are saying. Now that comment can be taken out of hand a little bit, but what I meant by that was simply just who is giving good quality information, who's generally actually providing results, and who's actually making people gains, which they are promising, works, and what people are always seeing results from. So obviously, don't take full advice from me. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. I've only been training for a year and a half, so don't take everything I say with like full extreme and blame me if it doesn't work. I'm giving you what I've found should work and what confidently is working in a lot of people around the world and people that I know. Now, the first one is going to be that you prioritize intensity over frequency. Do not pull up to the gym with a washing list full of exercises and expect to get biceps looking like this. If you never give your muscles time to actually go for gold in the exercises, you're not letting them train. If you're doing like 12 exercises, but you're half repping it, you're moving your hips in the bicep thing, like you're like heaving it up, you've got weird posture, like when you're bench pressing, you're one angled and stuff like that. You don't want to look like an idiot when you're at the gym. So train each muscle group to an effective range. I would personally say what's worked for me is eight to 12. I know some people would be like, eight to 12, what? Yes, 8 to 12. You do not need to train 27 sets flopping like a fish when you're doing it compared to training 8 to 12, but actually repping them out properly and getting some good range of motion, good intensity, not going to failure all the time, sometimes but not all the time, and generally just making the most out of the actual reps you're doing. And so you don't need to be 24-7 in the gym to make Gains. As long as you're targeting each muscle group within a frequent amount of volume, which like I just said was 8 to 12, you'll start to build muscles. And the, probably a good amount of stuff I would say is that you need rest along with this. You need to be resting. You cannot just go to the gym seven days a week, pump out stuff, and expect your boy to go. You know, I was just thinking then, this really kind of ties a lot to bro culture, where it's like, get in the gym, bro. Come on, man. Let's lift some heavy ass weights, bro. <laughs> Turn down the volume, turn up the intensity, turn up the rest days, and you'll be good to go. And the last one I'm going to give you is that you should probably focus on compound exercises over like isolation exercises. Do include isolation exercises, but probably include a lot of multi-joint exercises like overhead press when you're training shoulders. What I'm saying is here is prioritize compound exercises. Prioritize things that are going to target multiple muscle groups and really strain your muscles that allow you to go not too failure, but decently close-ish and ones that you can't really half rep out. Things where you're standing up, you're engaging your core, and you're actually participating in exercise instead of sitting down and repping out something while looking at your phone. Compound exercises, hard to do exercises that are actually going to wear you out and not a washing list full of exercises that you're just brought up and you think you're going to make muscle. You don't need to be in the gym 24-7. You need to be doing compound exercises. Now, you can include isolation exercises. They definitely do work, but I would say compound exercises is where the gold is. And the final method to making a decently good workout plan is to buy one from a trusted um, fitness influencer. Now, I say trusted with a huge emphasis on the end because 99% of the influencers found on the internet that involve fitness are full of bullshit. <clears throat> like, seriously. So you need to understand the difference between good 
and bad information. Now, this can depend on like who you are. Some people will benefit hugely from maybe training a bit more, and some people will definitely train or become better from training a bit less. It is very, and there are huge exceptions in some people. So do not always just be like, this influencer is good, people say he's good, so I'm gonna follow him. You need to find out for yourself. If you want some like general kind of good fitness influencers, I found it's gonna be basement bodybuilding and revival fitness these two people if i was going to buy a program from and not one make myself i would buy it from these guys these guys have taught me through and through some fantastic stuff and i would highly recommend you go watch them because they just generally pump out actually good information and will actually see you gains I, as soon as i started following basement bodybuilding and revival fitness's diet and workout plans i actually started seeing gains and i actually started you know wanting to go to the gym because i was seeing progress now does depend on what you want to do where you want to go kind of your direction but i would say just for a middle ground watch c2 guys if you don't like them you don't like their opinions or their values you don't have to watch them but those guys for me definitely worked in terms of building muscle through not only working out but also through diet speaking of which now this final topic which i want to talk about which is going to sum up my video is going to be diet now this is also where the keyboard warriors come out maybe not as strong as the workout ones but you know they're definitely still there their, their fingers are still shaking on the keys and they love to bombard people with false information about nutrition like this bullshit but i'm gonna give you three tips that i have found really do work from a fundamental perspective similar to the workouts don't have to listen to me but you, you get the idea that have worked efficiently and will probably see gains for you so Let's learn how we can turn our mum's cooking into mass gains in the gym. Effectively, of course. Now, the first thing I want to make clear is that to all the skinny guys and to all the normal weight guys out there, you need to do one thing for me, and that's going to be bulk. You need to bulk. Now, you may be looking at me like, bulk? I don't want to get fat. Or, I'm already fat, dude. Trust me, you're not already fat, and yes, you need to bulk. This is fat fat. You are not fat fat. You are just slightly pudgy. If you're, like, skinny fat or normal-ish. And if you're normal, you're, like, skinny anyway. And if you're skinny, man, you definitely need to bulk. Trust me, all these people are coming to me and saying, I'm on the cut. And my friends are coming to me and saying, like, oh, I'm on the cut, bro. I'm cutting down. And I'm like, cutting down to what? What are you cutting down to? You have no muscle in the first place. And this is what people get confused. They think, oh, I'm going to cut down. I'm going to look like a smaller bodybuilder. But trust me, you don't. You want to gain as much muscle as possible in your novice gains period, which is where you're going to gain the most muscle possible because your body is new to the gym and it can actually start adapting to the strength changes you're putting on it. In this period, you want to be maximizing it. Trust me, I did not maximize it. I was sitting there and being like, I'm going to cut down, bro. And I cut, and I made no progress. As soon as I started the bulk, which you may have noticed, like, because I'm trying to get big pro through my face and stuff like that. You may have noticed I'm trying to get bulky, bro. Point being, as soon as I started doing that, I saw gains. My arms grew, my legs grew, my chest grew, my shoulders grew. All that started to grow because I was allowing my body to eat and I wasn't being scared of eating. And now, trust me, there are some fitness, flip fitness influencers out there who are going to tell you, you're not going to get fat, dude. Trust me, you're not going to get fat. You're going to be fine. So skinny guys, normal guys, and even like skinny fat guys out there, trust me, you need to bulk. You're not going to get fat. You need to bulk. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is clean food. It's going to be clean eating and eating for nutrition instead of eating because calories. Now, hopefully you've got the idea of bulking down. You agree with bulking and you're going with me on this. So... You may now be tempted to just go, oh, well, I'm bulking, dude. And you might start making the excuse of when there's pizza in front of you, when there's a burger, when you can go out to fast food with your friends. Well, I'm bulking, so I might as well just, you know, eat the food. But trust me, it isn't worth it. You want to be eating majority whole foods, nutritious base foods, eggs, fruit, vegetables, nuts, meat, things like that. That's actually going to see your face, especially, and your muscles good now you can eat certain junk food to an extent you can definitely have your treat here and there this is why i like to do my 90 90 percent 10 percent rule 90 percent whole foods 10 percent treat food now i don't actually really do that much anymore i'm more like on a kind of a just bit more stricter where i kind of just try and go for whole foods 
But when you're starting out, especially when you're bulking, you want to get as much whole foods in you as possible. And actually, what I forgot to mention before is if you're like fat, like if you're like obese fat, you can cut then. You don't have to bulk if you're fat. If you're already fat, you've already got fat on you to build muscle. So go for gold. And if you've got a viable reason to cut, cut. I was just making the point that if you're skinny, you you're not cutting down to anything, but you know what I was talking about. But point being, what I'm trying to hear is eat whole foods. And the last one is going to be don't take it to the extreme. And this goes for everything in the gym and to an extent outside the gym as well. In a life expectancy, don't push something so far to one end that you become a freak and don't push it so far to the other end that you basically become what is known as do you even lift. I'm talking about gym standards here, not life standards, but you know what I'm talking about. Now, gym isn't your whole life, and it definitely shouldn't be. Unless you want to be an IFBB pro with a pro card in bodybuilding, you do not need to take it to the extreme. You do not need to be in the gym 24-7, lifting weights as much as possible, training three times a day, seven days a week, and basically only taking rest days when your muscles fail. You don't need that. You're an average guy. If you're looking to be healthy, build muscle, look aesthetically pleasing, but also be healthy, you don't have to take it to the extreme one. You want to go extreme-ish, but you want to go also in the middle. You want to be unseriously serious, if that makes sense. You want to take everything to a serious extent. You want to take your training seriously. You want to take your diet seriously. You want to take your mindset seriously. You want to take all these things seriously, as it's what's going to make you progress. There's no point in putting in this effort if you're not making any progress. But you don't want to push it to the extreme extreme where it becomes your entire life. So take it seriously, but remember, it's the gym. It's a hobby. This is what I'm doing. It's an optional thing. So I'm taking it unseriously. I'm unseriously taking it seriously. Or if you want to proper words, seriously taking it unseriously. But that's going to be the video today. I honestly do hope you enjoyed this. This is the first time we're going to like kind of changing up my recording where I'm doing with a script. I'm talking to the camera. I'm kind of just in the background. I'm not Trying to put a bit more quality in my videos, make them more, you know, efficient, more like wanting to be watched, basically, instead of just like pumping out as many stuff. So you might see less content overall, but you're also going to see a lot more quality in the videos I do make. So, hope you enjoy this. Do all the cool YouTube stuff. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. So, let's try and do it. Honestly, I don't mind if you don't, but I would really appreciate it if you did. So, like, subscribe, do all the cool YouTube stuff, and hope to catch you in the next one. Why is that guy so loud?